Okay, Graham, have I got a green light to, to kick off? I do. Great stuff. Well, uh, thanks everybody for uh, attending this evening. Good evening and welcome to this webinar on the expressions of interest portal uh, for defective apartment and duplexes hosted by the housing agency this evening. Uh, my name is Brian Marr. I'm a director of the Apartment Owners Network and I will be chairing this evening's webinar. And by way of background, the Apartment Owners Network is a volunteer-led organisation and we represent the interests and views of owners of homes in managed estates in Ireland. <clears throat> we were formed in 2008, and we've long campaigned for a redress scheme to tackle the scourge of construction defects. I'm joined this evening by Martin Hernan, Program Manager at the Housing Association for the Apartment Defect Remediation Scheme, and Pat Montague of the Construction Defects Alliance. So I will, I'll invite Pat to speak in a moment uh, to set the scene for us, and then Martin will make a presentation on how to populate the Expressions of Interest portal. Uh, just to advise, the webinar will probably take about 30 minutes. Uh, the housing agency did seek questions in advance, and thanks to those who submitted questions, and they will be used uh, by Martin to frame the presentation this evening. And there will be a recording of the webinar made available later this week on both the Housing Agency and Construction Defects Alliance websites. So that's the formal intro. So um, I, what I might do is I'll hand over to uh, Pat Montague of the Construction Defects Alliance. Pat, and you might just set the scene for us as to what the portal is and why uh, you feel it's important that we have the webinar this evening to, to discuss how to populate it. Uh, thanks, Brian, and, and welcome to everybody uh, who's attending this evening. I suppose, look, the, the idea of the portal was something that uh, we in the Construction Defects Alliance suggested to government and uh, it was then the housing agency, which is a public sector body. Uh, it's a body acting on behalf of government uh, and they are the ones who have set up the portal uh, and are managing it. And indeed, I think it's also important to say that the housing agency is the body that government have tasked with uh, managing uh, the future uh, defects remediation scheme, uh, which we all know has yet to be set up. So, so it doesn't actually exist at the moment as such. The purpose of the, uh, the, the, the portal uh, from the state's point of view, uh, and this is really important, is to gather information uh, on where defective developments are located, to get some sense, as much as people have, of the nature of the defects that are there, numbers involved and stuff like that, or the sense of progress that has been made or otherwise in relation to remediation of defects. And, 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 and the reason why that's important is to help plan uh, the defect scheme effectively, because more information the housing agency, which, as I said, is the body that's going to be managing the defects remediation scheme, the more information that the housing agency has in advance, the better able uh, we are to fine tune the uh, scheme uh, and to get it up and running uh, as effectively and as quickly as possible. Bearing in mind, mind you, that that depends on the legislation being passed and the regulations put in place and all the rest of it, which is not the housing agency's job to do, but they will be managing it. So, again, we thought it would be a good idea to get information to them and to government to help uh, plan the scheme. The other reason we asked for the portal uh, was to uh, enable uh, owners management companies and indeed owners to be able to get information as well to, and that's the purpose of the portal as well, to provide information about as well about what's happening or what's going on or not going on. And it allows owners to be linked in with all of that uh, as well. Because I think one of the, the issues there sometimes that people have said to us is a sense of, um, operating in a vacuum, not knowing what's happening, where to go to and whatever. And the housing agency is actually going to be providing, like tonight, webinars and other information for people. So it was a way of linking people in with that. So hence, that's why we asked for the portal. I think it's really important to say, and in fact, I've already answered emails on this today, 
that uh, this is not a formal registration process. What do I mean by that? It's about expressing interest in the scheme. But obviously, you cannot register for a scheme that doesn't exist at the moment. So uh, we will have to wait till the scheme is up and running, the legislation passed, the regulations in place, and and you know for all of that formality be, to be done before people can formally register. So there is no reason for anybody to panic if they're not registered. However, we think it would be a good thing. It's not required, but it's a good thing if people do so that that information is passed on to help plan the scheme, but also too as well that people are in touch then with the housing agency and then able to get information and whatever. And so there's a sense of reassurance that people are actually in the system, so as to speak. But the formalities will be required down the road when all of those things are set up. But at least, you know, you're sort of, for want of a better word, in the net, so as to speak. But there's no panic if you don't do it. But that's really all I want to say at the moment uh, and then hand over, hand back uh, to Brian at this stage. Uh, so thank you for that. Thanks, Pat. So if we were to synopsize that, um... You know, the, the portal is essentially is an information gathering tool, it's a data gathering tool. It will help uh government and the housing agency in terms of uh, in terms of how it approaches the scheme, but there is no um uh mandatory requirement for, for OMCs at this point to contribute any data. So therefore you don't have to panic if if you're unable, if you don't have the data, but it would be uh, essentially it's a useful tool at this moment in advance of any legislation and program being put in place for us to gather this information as best as possible. Is that fair to say? I think okay. it sounds good to yeah, me. That's fair to say. Very good. Okay, fine. So, Pat, thanks for setting the scene. Now we might hand over to Martin, who's going to uh, share some slides. Martin is the program manager for the scheme and uh, or the proposed scheme. And uh, Martin, uh, if you want to kick off your, your slide presentation. Yeah. I'll share that there now. So hopefully that's up on the screen. So again, this evening I'm going to do a walk through the expression of interest portal, um, to show how we use it and the information that's required within the same uh, introduction to the portal. So again, introductions have just been done. Um, this is going to give an overview and understanding of the expression of interest portal, uh, conditions of use, and again a real time interaction to get practical insights of how to carry out, um submitting an application or an expression. The overview, uh, expression of interest form purpose, the expression of interest form serves as a knowledge base for owner management companies and stakeholders. So that's your property management agents, owners, et cetera, to input data about their respective debt developments. The eligibility of the scope, affected OMCs and stakeholders can use this form to express their potential interest in a future remediation scheme. Both Pat and Brian touched on that. This scheme is aimed at addressing fire safety, structural safety and water ingress defects in apartment and duplexes constructed between 1991 and 2013. Timeline legislative dependencies. The implementation timeline for the remediation scheme is contingent on legislative developments, which are subject to legislative per process. And there's further details on this, which I'll, I'll share these slide deck out and the links will be available. Additional information, supplementary information and guidance on the remediation scheme can be assessed through two documents. And again, I'll send these out um, with this PDF presentation so you'll have them access to them. Conditions of use. The invitation expression of interest it invites affected OMCs and the stakeholders to express their interest in a potential support scheme. There's no entitlement or obligation. Uh, there's differing requirements, so the requirements and criteria for any established scheme downstream may differ significantly from those within this form. Non-comprehensive information, this form is not exhaustive in detailing all scheme requirements and no evaluation or assessment. Submitting this form does not imply an assessment of potential defects and properties. Information sharing, the housing agency may share this information with the department. Non-binding expressions, neither the housing agency nor the department are obligated to any party's expression of interest and no contractual commitment. Filling out this form does not establish a contractual commitment or obligation, and no legal relationship. And then there's freedom of information compliance there as well. So I'll go across to the portal now itself, and we can walk you through a real-time application. OK. 
Okay, so you should be able to see the screen there now. So I've just synopsed um, what we have here in the information. So if we come down to the bottom here, I've read and understood the conditions of use and by ticking this box confirmation, my agreement to these conditions of use begin expressive interest. So the fields marked with the asterisk are mandatory and non-completion for fence and expression. So the first, the first one here is the owner management company name. And again, please ensure the correct form of the company's name Company names may be checked, the company's online register environment. Now, again, what I will say to this is, is that um, to input what you have to hand on this, um, I'm just going to put test in here. So, again, this is more for us to capture the information and build the knowledge base up on same. So don't get caught up if you don't know the full OMC's name there. Um, we will catch it um, through, the, through the location area. And then again, the owner management company. So this is an asterisk. So this isn't a requirement um, name. So I'm going to input my own name here. So that's straightforward. Either your name of the person submitting the, the expression. And then again, what we have here is the status of the contact. So we have property management agent, OMC director, or other. So a couple of questions that would have came into us under MUDS would be, as, as an apartment owner, can I fill out this application form? So in that instance, you will click here. Um, if you do pick property management agent, you will then get a follow-on question here, which is for your PSRA license number. So in this instance here, I'll put in owner. And then we go to next. So again, the name of the multi-unit development, I'm just gonna call it the manor. And then again, the address, Main Street, we'll go Salins. And then we go Nace, and that's County Clare. And then you'll pick your, your local authority that that's referenced the same. We come on down, planning reference number again, this is an asterisk, so if you know it, great. And if you don't, there's no worry there. And then the year of construction. So again, that's between 1991 all the way up to 2013. I'll just pick a year there. Again, the tenure of the multi-unit development is a social, is a private, or is a mixture of both. So select one. And then again, the number of dwellings. Now, again, I, ideally, we'd like we'd like the, the the right number here. But again, if you don't have it and you have the ballpark figure, that's fine. So let's just say in this development, there's 200. And again, question 12 is you stake the number of blocks. So in this instance, let's say there's, there's we'll say 10 blocks. So again, depending on the number of blocks, the, the next line will populate out. So um, just for, for time here, I'm going to reduce that down to 100. And I'll reduce that down to 5. And then in that, we say there's 20 in each of the blocks. And we'd say it's four stories. So stories are from ground floor and um, not including basements. Question 14, are there commercial properties located around this uh, multi-unit development? I'm gonna answer no to this time around. And again, please state the number of dwellings in the multi-unit development affected by defects. Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna list that as 100. Um, and again, it's it's an estimate. This, if you're the owner, you won't actually know how many is sort of affected by defects. Again, please state the nature of the defects. So there's three options here. All three can be selected. Again, if you only select one and downstream, you find out that there is structural safety issues and water ingress again this is just a knowledge base so when the when the scheme itself comes online you'll have the option then to select these through your omc and again has an inspection or assessment of the building by a competent professional be conducted in this instance a competent professional is a registered architect registered building surveyor or a chartered engineer i'm going to say yes to that has a report from a competent professional being prepared i'm going to say yes and again, if I say no here, we go to question 19, but if I say yes here, it then um, it asks about the level of the defects here. So significant, non existent and not known. I'm gonna say significant. Has there been engagement with the local authority fire service? And again, this is a yes or no. And have remediation works commenced? So in this instance, I'm gonna say yes. 
22, where remediation works related to fire safety defects entered into or commenced on or before the 18th of January 2023. In this instance, I'm going to say yes. And then have the remediation works been completed? So again, this, was, this would have been another question that would have came in a part of the portal. And what we had was um, some people were saying that they didn't know if the works had been fully completed. So in this instance here, it's a click, don't know. And then the final question here is, have the common areas of the multi-unit development been transferred from the developer to the owner's management company? And that's key for the scheme when, when it actually is rolled out that this has happened. So we click yes on that. And then that closes that out. So once we submit, we get this receipt here and then also a follow-on email to that address will have come through and that will have walked you through the expression of interest. Now, I might have gone faster than that, Brian. Is there anything that you'd like clarity on? I can go um, back I, in. I wonder, Martin, is it possible, and I know you've hit submit now, but it, would it be possible to get us back onto um, the, the the pages again? And we might just, yeah. if there's anything that, that strikes us, um, I know while you're trying to do that, we were discussing earlier that sometimes um, there isn't a black and white yes and no uh, to a lot of these questions. But I think we want people to be to not get bogged down in the fact that you mightn't know if there's a, you know you're asked for a yes and no response but you mightn't know your probably your best estimate it will do fine you know it, it's it's a matter of essentially getting the number of um uh, developments into the system uh, at the very least and there are no consequences essentially for getting the answers wrong it really is a matter because a, a number of times we've been asked you know yeah, and especially when we were speaking with politicians and, and, and stakeholders and they were asking us, well, how many do you think are impacted? And really, it was, you know, it's impossible for us to really know because there's a cohort of people who have who, are, who definitely know they've been impacted and, and they've had the surveys done and they've received the, um, the, the, the bill in the post. Uh, but there's a whole other cohort that uh, might be somewhere in between that. And, and, and there may even be developments that have decided to just uh, ignore the whole debacle and, uh, and, and, and not uh, attempt at all. So we don't know is the honest answer. And this is, to be fair, it's just an effort to get us kicked off. And uh, so we don't want people to be frightened that if they don't know the answer to these questions, that all of a sudden, you know, uh, there's any consequences to that. Best efforts is best. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, um, uh, Martin, if we just if we scroll down through. So, yeah, the blocks are fine. Uh, and, you know, uh, so the number of dwellings in the multi-unit development, for example. So you might have a situation, Martin, for, you know, where a typical development might have uh, maybe 200 apartments, but then 50 townhouses. Yes, uh, and those townhouses typically would stand alone away from an apartment. Wouldn't necessarily have all that common area uh, um, issues and and fire stopping issues that maybe a typical apartment block would have. So if we say we had a two hundred and fifty unit development in total, and it was two hundred units uh, it being apartments and fifty townhouses, how should we answer there in terms of the number of units and the number of units impacted? Yeah, so that's a good question. So for number 11 there, what I suggest you do is, is that you capture the full multi-unit development there. So you will catch the 200 apartments with the 50 townhouses. And then when you come down to state the number of dwellings in the multi-unit development affected by defects, that's then when you separate out the apartments there. And that figure there would be to 200. You'd be dropping out to 50 townhouses. Okay, fine. So that, that's, a, that's a sensible approach. And in terms then of the, the commercial properties, for example, located within the multi-unit development, if we had a situation where uh, the commercial property was maybe a separate, a totally separate building. Um, so we, we have two examples here, I guess. We have the typical example of where the commercial units are on the bottom and the apartments yeah. are on the top. And that's, I suppose, a, a, a building uh, all in itself and, and everybody's impacted. But you might have a situation where a commercial property is, you know, a totally separate building uh, to the apartments. Uh, if, if that was the scenario, should we answer yes or no in, in for question 14? I would say, so let's say, so where I am here at the moment, we have a creche, a commercial entity that sits out by itself. So in that, I would say that that's separate to the apartment. So that would be a no. Okay. 
Okay. If you want to keep scrolling there and Pat, if you see any questions that, that kind of arise as we're yeah, scrolling. I suppose uh, I would, before just getting that, just to re-emphasize what you were saying, uh, Brian, I think it's really important is that, um, look, perfection is the enemy of the good here. Um, that this isn't about, cap I suppose, catching people out or there's sort of any sense that, that, that um, you know, if it's wrong uh, or you can't complete it, therefore don't complete it. Um, you know, it's we do understand that in a sense, the, 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 a, lot, a lot of the detail that's here uh, is stuff that people who are directors of an OMC or who are the property management agents would have access to that information much more readily. But there are, we do want owners uh, to put in, and as, to be clear, you know, there are have been a lot of duplicates, and that's fine, because the system in the in the housing agency is able to manage and cope with that, and be able to sift that out. But we do want to get as many as possible in, uh, so you know, give it your best shot. If it's wrong and it turns out to be incorrect, that can be sorted out later. It's really important. Just the primary purpose of this is even just to get a sense of a list of, even, even at worst, if we got a list of locations where there were defective developments, that is still much better uh, than actually not having that information at all. So give it your best try. So. I would have thought, for example, on this, that some people who are owners, I'm looking at number, uh, I'm looking at numbers, uh, particularly from the 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 uh, the the sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen, and nineteen. They are ones that a lot of people might be put off by who are just owners, because they won't know uh, what the nature of the defects are. And necessarily, they won't know whether an inspection has been take taken place, uh, and and uh, you know whether there has been engagement with the local authority fire service. They obviously will know whether remediation works have commenced or not, because they're you know particularly owner occupiers will, but even landlords would as well. Why? Because they'd have to be notified if works are taking place, for example, in their block. They'd have to be aware of that. So I think, again, with those questions, they're the sort of ones that require maybe a bit more detailed knowledge. You know, just give it your best uh, estimate on that. Mar Pat, what, what, I, what I might suggest for those, and Martin, if you want to come in and correct me, uh, uh, feel free to do so. But if I think in the, in the instance, if you don't know, you can't really be answering yes to any of these questions. Correct. OK, so I, what I what I would be uh, suggesting here is that if you if you can't say yes for certain, well, don't say yes and uh, and uh, and put in the no because you don't know for certain. It may well be that there are a, a, a duplicate uh, a submission will be, will be made by our OMC in due course that will clarify that. And I think the the the, uh, the housing agency will be able then to to determine you know which answer to go with on the basis of the information that it's received and so i think that's probably the best way to go martin what, what do you um, think brian that has happened to date so we have had that we've had multiple of uh, submissions in and again as pat rightly we can sift through that and then we can see almost who the parent application is from the property management agent that has all the details there so we can then say that's the parent application and then the other people the other apartments owner who made that application we can slot them underneath that there so that that's all caught one underneath that umbrella but for us it's the knowledge base of what's out there on the ground so it's really the locations as pat said and then also brian like yourself the numbers of affected units that we have out there and and and, and again location numbers and where they are so again if you don't know if a report has been done that's a no and if you if you don't know if there's been engagement with the local authority fires here is that's a no Fine. And Martin, you're happy enough to receive the submitted form, even if potentially it's wrong, rather than receive no form at all uh, yeah. from an OMC. And it, it's not captured in the wider scope when you're trying to assess, you know, the, the wider, the wider issue and making plans for that. 
Yeah, I I think I think answer. Um, I think Pat's word is best estimate there. I think there is yes and no there. If you don't know the answer, it's a no because then we have we we have a full fallot expression come in, and it'd be recorded as that. But this really is to build the knowledge base of what's out there on the ground, so we can have sight on it, and this will then help with the schemes coming downstream and planning for same. Very good. Very good. And okay, Pat, yeah, come in there. Yeah, I, look, I think that's actually really, really helpful. And I think, Brian, you you put that very well uh, in terms of setting that 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 up with with Martin because it reflects some of the questions we get in. And there was even a comment there in the Q&A about the, the, the sort of the level of complexity that and, and I suppose of information that a lot of ordinary owners wouldn't have. But the other side of it too, I think it's important to say as well, is that you know we do know some um, OMCs for various reasons have stood back from I suppose um, engaging with this issue, and where owners do you know have a concern, ordinary owners, we'd encourage them to come forward um, because it helps. The more we know, the better able the 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 better that the final scheme will be. Uh, the more information we have, the better, and it's better for everybody uh, that we have as much information as possible. But even if it's just information about location of defective developments, or whatever that is, still much better to have uh, than not to have. Uh, and it's better from residents' point of view um, and indeed the overall scheme that we reflect, you know, and take on board what people do know. So it's not about catching people out. It's not about that sort of thing. So, you know, answer as much as you can. Uh, and then if you don't know certain things, as I said there, in terms of complexity information, answer no. But the key thing absolutely a more important thing to get is location um and which you will know because you're living there and again on numbers of things or whatever your best estimate it doesn't have to be precise if you're out if you say it's 200 and it ends up being 168 that's fine that will wash out um you know as the process goes on but it's important now to capture as much as possible. But also from your own point of view, you know, you'll at least be in the information loop as well, too. And that's what's really important. Can I can I ask um Martin, I think? Um Martin, if if you are sure that your own imagined company has already made a submission, mm. um, should you double up? No. Or 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 should you leave, should you Take so, it that this submission has has been and has been made, and you don't need to make a, a separate submission. And I was going to come on to that there. That like I think the first protocol is to check with the OMC and the property management agent that they haven't submitted is because otherwise it's a duplicate that you're putting back into the system. So I think if you can get clarity on that now, obviously if your if your OMC or your property management agent isn't answering that question, like you will sort of end up putting one in yourself. But I think that's the first protocol to ask that question: Have they done that? Fine. Okay. And in in terms of just, there's just, I mean, I guess question 21 is on the screen uh, and it just might be helpful for some people to to understand the the date 18th of January, 2023 is, is, is mentioned there. Why is that a, um, a, a date that is mentioned? That is when there was communication on this scheme on the January the 18th, 2023. And I think that was just a, a hold, a placeholder date of have works commence post that date, knowing that the scheme was coming down line. But that's just, again, just to see uh, have works being commenced, either okay. pre that date or post that date to see is there moving on the ground. Okay, if fine. Was, if you don't mind me coming in, that was the date of the government decision. Um, that was the date of the government decision to set up the scheme and whatever but just to be clear because i know there had been reference to this in a in a query uh the government so from from the 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 government have made clear 
that uh, they will be uh, including schemes where works have, um, you know, been completed uh, and indeed whatever before 18th of January 2023. So there's no reason for people to panic about that particular date. It's just that was the date of the government decision um, and what the government said, you know, so so uh, go, but the government have also said, just to be clear, that, you know, everybody will be captured uh, through the various mechanisms of the scheme. But it's just that that was the date of the government decision. Um, and I suppose it just basically it, 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 that's why that date is there. It's a sort of formality more than anything else. And there's no greater significance than that. Uh, so, you know, it's just simply, as I said, a formality. But nobody's going to be in or out uh, because of that particular date. It just happens to be the date of the government decision. OK, and again, I, I suppose just just to reiterate again, this expression of interest is to build our knowledge base. It's the future scheme, the come downstream that will have its own separate application process. Yeah. So whether you uh, whether you express an interest or not express an interest, you are not left out of the scheme that will come come on stream. Very good. Uh, maybe one final question then, Martin, and we'll, and we'll wrap up. Um, question 17, um, in terms of has an inspection or assessment by a competent professional being conducted, and, and we have the information, if you want to click on it, in terms of who, uh, how that competent professional is defined. Um, there's questions maybe have, have arisen with regards to the independence of that competent professional. Um, could that professional be an in-house should we say maybe from the a managing agent for example if they had the the requisite qualifications you might know the answer to that and you can take that away uh, but we have heard for example of where the developer uh, or the original architect um, has uh, has been engaged as the as a competent professional and and uh, do they uh, meet the hurdles um, in terms of maybe a question around independence so in relation to the property management agent, I'm going to take that one away and right. I'll come back to you on that one. But in relation to the original architect or developer, I believe there'd be conflict of interest in that there. So again, we would like to see an independent report coming in for uh, to identify the defects there. Very good. So um, I understand, Martin, that there is an FAQs on, on your website. There is. And and those are being, I suppose, added to as we get pertinent questions uh, in all the time uh, and, and getting updated. So we would refer people to, to your website with regards to any further questions that you might have. At the moment, this webinar is, is specifically with regards to actually populating the uh, the, the portal rather than <clears throat> any questions around qualifying for the scheme, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we would ask people not to get uh, uh, you know too focused on scheme qualification. It really is around how one goes about populating the portal this evening. And I'm sure we will have other opportunities once we get a little bit more meat on the bones in regards to the actual scheme itself in due course. Okay, I think that wraps it up for us, us this evening. Thanks to everybody for, for your engagement. Thanks to Martin and Pat and to Graham in the background with regards to, to, uh, to setting up our IT this evening. Hopefully everybody found it useful. As I said, this, uh, this recording will be on the Housing Agency uh, website uh, and FAQs will be there as well, updated, as well as on the Construction Defects Alliance uh, website. And I would encourage anybody impacted by construction defects to engage with the Construction Defects Alliance to keep up to date on all matters uh, relating to the scheme. So with that, I'll just say thanks to everybody for your involvement and good evening.